Right. Let's get into it. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to Train Sim World 2020, where it all began. Today, I thought uh, I'd take a little break from Train Sim World 2 and uh, jump back on the old, the old war horse. That is Train Sim World 2020, and one of my favourite routes, Trans Pennine. Today I'll be doing a uh, passenger service going from Manchester Victoria to Leeds, calling at principal stations only in the class 45, and pretty much roughly this time as it is in the UK. It's 15:37. We'll be conducting the service at 15:48. How nice to be back on. You know, if 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 it was felt it feels nice, doesn't it, to be when you go back on Train Sim World twenty twenty and you see all the old routes and they haven't played for a while and you think, Oh yeah, it's nice to get back, isn't it? It's nice to be back, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, a bit of passenger services as well for a change. Uh we're doing mainly uh freight on uh sand patch grade, so if we'll take a break and go back in time on one of my favourite routes that I miss so much, Trans Pennine. Oh, those two local add ons, and uh, occasionally West Somerset now and again, so it's nice to be on the old stuff. Uh, HRL, good morning from the United States. Uh, hope you're well. It's good, e it's good afternoon in the UK. Right. Oh, is England going? Let's uh, unlock the doors. I think it's that side. Oh no, I don't think it is. It's that one. Right, we need to set things up briefly. Reduce the seat height. Don't know if you can see it, but I'm struggling to see it. There we go, make it. Uh. Nose light, of course. I'll put the cab light on briefly. I thought it'd be a bit brighter at this time of the day. Headlight switch is on. Wait until 15, 49 and 30 seconds. I'll uh, quickly do the uh, master, master key is on. I'm such an idiot. There we go. Right, let's take a look at the exterior of the train for this afternoon's service. I can hear a uh, class 40 over there, two of them. They'll be conducting an oil train service. Time to go already, good god. Uh, time to go already. So say goodbye to Staley Bridge. Uh, to Manchester Victoria, I should say the first stop is Staley Bridge, due in at 16.04 Oh, uh, quickly, I need to do something which I haven't done in a while and that is uh, go on to the settings and change, uh, take off that silly little marker thing which I hate come on thank you ah, the old girl still got it this game I love the menu layout of this and particularly on the journey mode I, I, I feel it's much better laid out you know with the pictures and everything I do like it. it, it feels more clean if you like compared to the menus on Train Sim World 2 um, and the Train Sim World 2 menus feel a little bit rushed and sometimes the text in general uh, alright so the amps is broken for some reason but it is working I can hear it so Ooh, very odd oh well we're moving so that's a positive uh, Misha, what do you think of the Italian Grand Prix? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to first be happy. 
Yeah, but the first thing would be happy for our Fatari. That's probably the only time they're going to hear the national anthem all, all year. Frankly, what a race it was. Uh, ever since, uh, I will be honest, I watched the first lap and it looked interesting. I then switched off for a bit. Um, and then when I heard there was a red flag, I thought, hmm, that means a restart, isn't it? And I watched the rest of the race and it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it was all down to that house. If that house didn't break down and block the pit lane, then uh, we'll deny access to the pit lane. And yeah, Lewis wouldn't have been at the back. And you know, unbelievable race. Uh, we'll never see something like that for a while. Now, why is my amps not working? I don't understand. Hmm. Something's not right, and I don't know what is. Is my... Did I close the doors or something? I, I, I did close the doors. Very odd. Hang on, let me... Let me... Let's come to a complete stop here. Something's not right. I don't understand. The... The throttle is not applying for some reason. I mean, I could hear the throttle being applied, but we're not moving very far. Uh, yeah, I am in forward. Yeah, the master key is on. I'll oh, take the brakes off again. Mm, very odd. I don't know why it ain't moving. This is the first time I've encountered a thing like this before. Ever. In the 45 I'll have to restart it again. Ooh, very odd. Very strange. I'm just thinking I I did the the starter procedure was correct, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have to no, we don't have to change the brakes to vacuum because uh, they're just coaches. Well, well, I'd be damned. <laughs> very, very strange. <laughs> very weird. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, HRL, the requests for route extensions for Preserve Collection route seems to be going up. Oh, I see many requests to extend in the forums, Long Island Railroad and the Great Western Express. Yeah, um, I had a little cheeky peek at the forums. I don't usually visit them. I only visit the forums to know of any updates to the game, you know, and they, they were uh, saver details. Um, I had a little cheeky peek and uh, it seems to be the case. Uh, I'm, I think that will cool. I think that will uh, cause Dovetail a bit of a heart, a bit of a headache as well as a, a, a big surprise. You know, when they announced the route map, uh, I think their strategy was so people could, you know, I suppose shut up and not making <laughs> the extensions, you know, to the old routes. You know, hence why they, you know, bring them over and, you know, allow them to be more creative on the scenario plan up front. Um, but yeah, I wonder if that's caught them off guard because obviously they, they'd never, you know, they would never do something like that. You know, when they published the roadmap, you know, all of a sudden, all these details, you know, new routes and loco add-ons to new and old routes and, you know, um... I think it caught them off guard, and I think by spilling the details on new routes and, you know, loco add-ons to new and old routes, I bet deep down he would have thought, yeah, that was satisfy the crowd, you know, oh, fantastic. But uh, on the forums, it seems the demand for work to be done, so to speak, on the old routes remains uh, very, very high, not just extensions, but also bugs and tweaks and things like that. I mean, they did say in the roadmap they're fixing, fixing bits and bobs, to some of the old routes, like uh, Tees Valley in particular is getting a bit of an overhaul on the scenario front. Um, I think uh, Transpennine briefly, I think there's something to do with Miles Platting Station. I mean, if we stop there, I definitely need to have a look at Miles Platting Station because uh, I'm like, well, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Unless it's very inaccurate to the uh, 1983 setting, then uh, I cannot say. 
I cannot say much. I have to do some research. All right, now let's do it correct this time. Well, I did do it correct last time, but I want to know why. Forward, right. Let's get some lights on in here. If I can find a way. Tuh. We'll find it. Now that's the demister. We'll find it. Oh. Blast! Why is it so dark? No. It's somewhere. Oh. Oh. Hey. There we go. I didn't think it'd be this dark. I must admit. You know, it's not like late in the day, is it? Cool. Blimey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just check the back. Yeah, that is fine. We don't have any safety systems on this route, so that's fine. Right. Right, let's reduce at least the brakes. Let it do its thing. Once we get into a bit of sunlight, then uh, I'll turn the cab light off. Right, now we can rock and roll. There we go, that's better. It's just a one off glitch. That's okay. Right, off we go. The first stop is Staley Bridge. 1604, would you in? So, that's not too bad, is it? Uh, Joshua, hey, how are you? Uh, why are you streaming this time of day? Um, well, I mean, to be honest, uh, every time for the past three days I've tried to stream at night um, on Sandpatch Grade, and obviously it wasn't having it. So uh, I thought, well, let's try something different. Let's go back on the old game. Let's go on the route I love. Uh, Transpennine. Let's do something different, not freight stuff for a change, but a passenger service and this and let's try it in the afternoon and see how it goes. Uh just oh yes, and for confirmation, uh this will be the only service I will be conducting in this stream. Right, we need to increase the part. This is something I've completely forgotten, like uh when you don't go on the old routes, you know, uh, after playing on Drain Sim World 2 for quite a long stint, I must admit, a few weeks now, wasn't it? Um, you, you you lose all your variables about uh, variables about uh, the the old routes, the old stuff. You know, when I went on the old game, I thought, oh, you know, what a nice feeling to be back. You know. Why not? You know. squealing noise and I can't remember if I put it on vacuum brake for the passenger or the air brakes eh. we'll wait and see I did forget. Um, I forgot how loud this logo was. <laughs> Turn it down a bit in my headphones. I don't know if you can hear me clearly due to the sound of the Class 45 roaring away. That's pretty loud. Uh, 
I think the squealing noise is gone. I thought the brakes were somehow applying or something, that's what I first thought. Right. Here's the first station that we're passing through tonight, uh, tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon. <laughs> Wherever you're watching it, around the world. I forgot, I haven't played this in so long, I can't remember what the stations are. Where the hell are we? Where are we? I need a sign. Oh, Mars Platic here. Oh, okay, strange. I mean, it's abandoned and old, so. Oh. Yeah, fair enough. Right, let's turn that cab light off now. It should be a problem. I don't think, I think back in the 1980s you weren't allowed to have your cab light on. I believe it was a distraction or something, I'm not too sure. Uh, whether that be late afternoons and slash evening time uh, in the winter, I'm not too sure. As you know, the north of England does uh, get some pretty harsh winters. <laughs> well, colder, well, temperature wise, obviously you don't have snow and stuff, they get you usually a bit of snow. Uh, Scotland loves a bit of snow. Right, let's get up to speed. Uh, let's take a look at the chilly chap. Oh, the problem with mild cladding is it crashes on consoles. Mm, fair enough. Well, I've never encountered that problem. Yeah. Hey, the only routes I'm looking forward to is the London to Paris and uh, Munich to Augsburg with those routes are in train 2020. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I don't have trains in 2020, uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to. You know, the German routes are a bit there. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to them, of course, but they're not high up on the list, I mean the routes I'm looking forward to route wise is uh, you know the likes of the London to Farisham route definitely, uh, the, Mar the TGV Marseille to Avignon, um, I'm also looking forward to uh, the, what else, Cane Creek, I'm looking forward to that. And the uh, route from Switzerland. And the island lines. <laughs> I could just say I'm looking forward to all of them. <laughs> yeah, but top, top of the tree for me is definitely London to Farisham and uh, the TGV. Locomotive add ons, the DBBR 363 German Shunter. Surprise, surprise. Um, I'm trying to think of what else? The top of my head. Uh, the C40 AW looks interesting. I was looking at uh, the history of it on sand patch grade and photographs of it and so on and so forth. And it looks really interesting. I, I can't wait to give that a crack. Um, uh, what else? The Class 313, of course. Uh, that'll be interesting. But hey, these, you know, these local add ons, they're, they're, they're some way off. Uh, so, yeah. Oh yeah, and the local add-on to uh, London to Farisham. The, was it 345 or something like that? I, I can't remember. I think that's what it's called, the 365 or whatever it's called. Something like that. But yeah, I mean, I've been looking at the uh, train simulator versions of, uh, you know, the the routes uh, that will be coming to Train Sim World 2. Uh, very interesting uh, routes, must say, across the board. Uh, other than the uh, Cane Creek, which we have absolutely no idea what that route will be like. There is no dovetail. I've never made it before. River Games have never made it before. Uh, well, River Games don't make hardly any American stuff, do they? Or English stuff, for that matter. Um, so, 
Cane Creek is the big mystery, like what's that going to be like, you know, and from a company I have never heard of until a couple of weeks ago, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, did any of you heard of Skyhook games before? I mean, <laughs> what, what kind of games do they make? I have no idea. So, yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting, this Cane Creek. I mean, they got the Locos. We know what the locos are going to be. It's just uh, in Union Pacific and uh, maybe some little visual tweaks like the 38 2 had on Peninsula Corridor. Uh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the TGV route is actually pretty long, uh, which is which was surprised me. It's I think roughly was six, excuse me, 65 miles long if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the London to Farisham route I think is what 50 miles off the top of my head 50 51 miles maybe 61 miles something like that I'm not entirely too sure um, but uh, yeah Let's hope the overall package is, is good, not just DLC, but the game itself, you know. Uh, as a guarantee, for sure, it'll be probably riddled with bugs along the way, but, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Um, I wish, I think they need to clean up the journey mode on Train Sim World 2. It's, it's, it's far too rushed, I mean, you know, there's no information displaying, you know, uh, what each chapter contains you know what what the overall synopsis is of this chapter like what are you driving what are you learning um, and then when you go into the chapters there's no description on anything so you don't know you know what service does what you know where does it go to or from is it a scenario is it not you just don't know so uh, I wish they go back to the the way they laid out uh, journey mode in the past. Uh, let's hope they do. Just we'll just have to give them time. But there's no guarantees. So uh, another thing as well. Speaking of journeys, uh, uh, will they be adding the journey mode to uh, routes in the past? I think they don't have it. Uh, I think the only one I can think of the top of my head is Rapid Transit. That does not have a journey mode. And neither does the uh, add-ons, some of the add-ons don't have it either. So the West Somerset add-ons don't have it, the 33 or the 52, the 155 for Ruiz ignored doesn't, uh, the 182 for Rapid Transit doesn't. Um, cool, blimey, what else? <laughs> um, the Heavy Freight Pack doesn't. Uh, and I think that is it I think in terms of the route add-ons and previous routes so I, I and it's not it's not particularly hard I mean sure you, all you do is just literally bang out five minute ideas of you know what each chapter should be about what should be in those chapters and do it you know you don't have to make anything for goodness sake you know like actual gameplay stuff you know it's just just making a little menu I mean I'm not an expert but if I had a, a lot of technical knowledge on, on uh, how to build these things, then uh, I would say to them, hey, let's give it a go. Why not? Right. We are brought to you in Steely Bridge. Um, <clears throat> a bit of good news, actually. Um, uh, tomorrow, uh, I will be having, um, I've been granted to have a, a day of leave of work, uh, because it's one of my, uh, uh, uh close friend's, uh, birthday, and, uh, so we are going to be going out, uh, to lunch, uh, which is quite nice <laughs> for, to celebrate, uh, his birthday, so, uh, that'd be nice. Which is nice, <laughs> I must admit. <laughs> it's nice to get a bit of time off. I mean, 
I haven't had four days of work since... <coughs> well, since that big break I had at the start of August. Um, so, roughly a month ago, roughly. Um, so, yeah. Might see a bit more content from me, maybe. <laughs> Um, I mean, I had a comment the other day on because I published a uh, you know the tutorial and the first scenario of Peninsula Corridor. And someone was like, "Oh, why, why should you put that out? God, blimey, mate! We played it for ages. It's getting a bit boring. The old stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, mate. Well, I haven't covered it on the channel, <laughs> you know. And plus, it's interesting for people to see what the old stuff is like on Train Sim World 2. You know, will there be any new bugs, maybe, or?" Will it be better in some areas? You, you, you just never know, do you? So I thought I, 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 I think it's nice. I think it's good that I cover the old, the old stuff on Train Sim World 2 on the, you know, the ones I haven't covered. So, yeah, I won't be covering just the new stuff, crikey! I'll be covering some of the old stuff too. And uh, yep, we're here at. Um, Steely Bridge, you can't really see much. It's a bit dark, darker than I would have thought. I put it in autumn time for goodness sake. It should be a little bit brighter than this. Maybe the clouds are a bit too dark. Anyway. Let's take a look at the chat. I mean moaning and groaning all the time. Um I guess people in the forums are just more interested in more content for preserve collection rates. Probably are. Joshua, maybe because you're the one that's been blessed by God. Don't say crashes. Don't, don't say crashes because then the stream will crash. I may not get crashes from the game, but I definitely get crashes from the stream. <laughs> I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> right, the next stop is Huddersfield, due in at 1627. Right, full power, full power. Uh, the old girl can do it. Oh, maybe not. No! Yes, bit of wheel spin. There we go. Easy. This is good. Very good. Right. Okay, um, Train Sim World 2 Scotland. Uh, good afternoon, I just bought this DLC today, absolutely love it and definitely my favourite by far. I agree, it's one of the best. Uh, but that depends on your preference, you know, if, if you like the old stuff, which I kind of do, um, compared to the more newer stuff, I mean I'm interested in the newer stuff of course, you know, the technology and you know, and all that stuff and the roots, you know. Um, but I do like the older stuff because, uh, you know, you get to experience an era that most of us haven't experienced. And get to drive locomotives that we will never ever, you know, well, drive. <laughs> as well as, uh, you know, be part of the services like, you know, passengers and so on and so forth. So, I find it fascinating, uh, the old stuff. Uh, and that's why I love the old stuff. You know, Trans Pennine's great. Tees Valley with the DLCs added is unbelievable. Um, you know, and uh, and when these DLCs come to Train Sim World 2, I mean, God, the amount of stuff I'm going to be doing with that scenario planner will be fantastic, unbelievable. The scenarios I can come up with, oh yes, many, many scenarios. <laughs> um, <coughs> Train Sim World 2 Scrolling Spurs, are you on a night journey? This is very dark. I mean, it is. Uh, no, really. It's in the afternoon. It was a 15. What was it? 1548 service going from Manchester to Leeds. I put it on autumn cloudy, and I didn't think it'd be this dark. I must admit. So, if you can't see much, I do apologise. I'm sure you'll be able to see something. <laughs> I think it's where we are because of the sun, like when we, I don't know, face the direction of the sun we'll be able to see a bit more, but we can still see a bit, for now. <laughs> I think it 
might be best actually if I do turn on the uh, the actual cab light if I can actually see it. Even I can't see it. Where's it gone? Cab light. There it is. That's better. Now you can see. Oh, there we go. <coughs> I wonder if the DBR 442 and the transit have working destination boards inside and outside the train, like in the curve Aken route. Um, I doubt it, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, the thing that is curious about that route and you know Northeast Corridor, you know. Transfer line doesn't look particularly. Uh, transfer rapid transit doesn't look particularly nice either. You know, it's not like they've they've heavily invested in you know the visual aspect. You know, they they did a bit on uh, Great Western Express, but they didn't on um, transfer uh, transfer rapid transit <laughs> and um, Northeast Corridor. Uh, so makes you think. Oh, why? leave Northeast Corridor out. If you could bring over rapid transit, I'm pretty sure you could bring over Northeast Corridor, but hey, I mean, I'm sure there's many technical reasons as to why, um, I suppose, uh, maybe the French services in Northeast Corridor might have something to do with it, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, trans rapid transit needs a bit of an overhaul really, a journey mode needs to be added, uh, the route needs a bit of a visual clean, uh, not to like 4K standards of the routes we've got in Train Sim World 2, but uh, just a bit more to the newer preserved collection routes I think would be uh, satisfactory. Um, and also I think... Um, yeah, of course, the destination boards, because they do work. I mean, on the 182, they got them working, didn't they? And on the uh, uh, cab car in rapid transit. And they got them working on Rusig Nord. Um, so, yeah, why not rapid transit? I think the difference with the Talent 2 in the Deutsche Bahn is I, I don't think they have the, the indicators on the windows, I think. They don't have them on the windows, I'm not sure, I have to double check. But obviously they do have uh, indicators, you know, dot matrix displays on the, you know, exterior of the train, front and the back. But I'm not sure if they have them on the windows, I'm sure someone can clarify that for me. If they're on rapid transit right now. <laughs> um, uh, Joshua, what's, um, what was that accent? It was Scottish. <laughs> not my best. Scottish impression, but I try. <laughs> I can do many accents, most of them are bad and horrible, but um, uh, acting skills are put to the test. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not going to do any shows this year. I literally, I mean, six months without doing anything, so I'm going to be a bit rusty. <laughs> I'm planning on doing examinations, uh, well, later in the year, but how that will happen and who knows it might not happen uh, but it's in the planning so that's a positive right need to increase the throttle a bit more again uh, Tuesday to Scotland yes these valleys next on the list yeah I agree uh, still quite expensive, isn't it? I mean, you know, I think they're still charging full price for the some of the old routes on the uh, DLCs, but I, I suppose that depends on the platform you're on. You know, if Sony's doing a special sale or Microsoft is doing a special sale, so yeah, but some of them are still pretty expensive. I mean, Tees Valley's nearly what a year old, over a year old, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, DW 
to Hertz Farm. <laughs> the sound of that engine, yeah, I know it sounds fantastic. Now, for me, for me, the class 45 to 40, 37, they, they sound fantastic. Uh, I tried the class 20, I had a little big boo of that, and the 31, just to get up to speed uh, with them once again uh, earlier uh, this morning, and that was great. Uh, it was just so nice to visit all the old stuff across the board, you know, you know, 45s, 40s, the 47, which of course had its physics improved on Transpennine, which is a dream. If you don't know what I'm on about, then there will be a stream dedicated to the uh, 47 for you all to enjoy. How much do you think Dovetail makes yearly? Too much. <laughs> oh, good answer, Josh. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> um, uh, it depends on the fee for paying the brands, isn't it? I mean, you know, these licenses don't come cheap. Particularly, um, you know, the modern ones like, you know, Deutsche Bahn. They must have paid one hell of a good, uh, one hell of a hefty fee. Because they just put there, there's probably more content for Deutsche Bahn than what probably in the train simulator front. I mean, it's just ridiculous the amount of loco add ons and routes we've had from you know Germany in general. I mean, it's, it's just crazy, you know. And the more coming in the future, we think we got what two German routes going from what Munich to Augsburg and um, what was it Hamburg to Lebeck or something coming up. Then there's a bucket load of loco add-ons as well. What, the 102 or the 187, the 423, and you know, there's, there's a lot of G German content. So I would be surprised if Dovetail paid one hell of a fee to get the full access, you know, do what you want kind of thing with a Deutsche Bahn license. Uh, of course, with the English or England, English, British stuff, it's more delicate I suppose particularly with some brands uh, the breed the older locos are easy because you know they're most of them held by uh, you know preserved railways or private collectors on certain locomotives so uh, but apart from the you know licensing fees they pay which I'm sure is pretty hefty um, yeah, they, they, they must make a fair bit of money um, from the customers. Too much in my opinion, too expensive. Uh, you know, I think I think they need to be a bit realistic, you know, I mean, people have been off work for nearly half a year. You know, many people, not just in the United Kingdom, but uh, around the world, I imagine, have lost their jobs. And, uh, and I think it's still, and I think it's quite unfair that they're not taking that into consideration and are not, um, lowering the price not just on the new stuff but the old stuff too you know I, I think they should do you know take a price cut you know make routes I would say 15 pounds and then make the local add-ons seven pounds depending on the uh, content or maybe we should just take a different approach and just vary the price on, on in terms of content we've got, you know. Like, say for example, the London Underground, one route, one loco. Uh, 24.99? No. That won't happen. I think they would reduce the price. Uh, I think the only route they've lowered the price on across the whole franchise is uh, an estate consistent at that price is West Somerset. That has always remained an under twenty, just uh, bang on twenty pounds in the United Kingdom. I don't know what it is um, in the other currencies around the world, but that is probably that is by far the cheapest route across the board. Um, uh, some, I mean, I know the loco add-ons in the past on PlayStation was, I think, what fifty p cheaper. I mean, it's not much, but it's a difference. Um, 
I think the PlayStation add-ons like uh, for the locomotives are what £11.49 I think compared to Xbox which is £11.99 so I mean, you know, for local add-ons to us, that's a lot. Uh, right. Let's take a look at the chat. Uh, TSW to Scotland. Um, I'm on Xbox to all £25. Here's road. I think WTO should be charging full price for preserved collection routes. I completely agree. Uh, Trenton to Scotland. Add-ons for Xbox are currently between 10 to 11 pounds. Mm. Okay, steady, but a bit too expensive. If it's b below 10 pounds, I can accept. I just wish they keep it like that. You know, when these sales come around, you know, you really got to grasp at the opportunity. The problem is for the new stuff when they get, you know, when they come out, they remain very expensive for a long long time you know bang on the same price and it's only what four five three you know two to three months later they say okay you can okay sony and playstation you can put this add-on in the sale you know so mm, i'm not a fan of their business practices but uh, i just wish they had more flexibility on their prices in terms of you know lowering the cost I mean maximum price verify the prices on on the content 100% especially in these difficult times I mean I can understand at the moment you know the company getting as much money in as possible because of the you know COVID situation you know I don't know if any of the staff were on uh, were on furlough or you know, may have to pay, take uh, wage cuts or anything like that. Um, and I, we still don't know if Dovetail is even allowed to, even, we don't even know if the Dovetail Studios is operating at full capacity. For what we may know, it might, might not be open at all. <laughs> so, and I don't know where the Dovetail Studios are based, so uh, I don't know if they're in a local lockdown or, or, or maybe they haven't got the I don't know precautions in place maybe to be you know 100% uh, confident that they can you know return to work and you know uh, not worry about any issues of transmission and all this stuff but uh, but you know I mean I do give a bit of credit to Dovetail for making this game you know they could have easily easily uh, uh, said, you know, hey, this COVID situation is is difficult. We're going to have to v delay the game for a year. You know, and I, and I could understand that. You know, just like they've done with you know sports and other games like that. You know, um, so uh, I do give a bit of credit. They they deserve a bit of credit for somehow, some way, getting Train Sim World Two out and pushing along. But then again, they do have to, don't they? For I suppose the, the, well, keeping people in their jobs, basically. And at the moment, I think finding a job for anyone at the moment is harder than ever before. Because, you know, you go on the news every day and literally thousands and thousands of people losing their jobs. You know, companies doing massive layoffs, companies going bust, you know. I mean, Brit the air industry in particular has been hugely affected. I mean, you know. British Airways and you know what is it is it Flybe or whatever it's called or I forget what it's called is it Flybe not Flybe something else EasyJet that's it EasyJet have uh, they almost went down the tubes didn't they um, so yeah difficult times of us all but uh, we just got to batten down the hatches and somehow get on with it Alright, but enough about the doom and gloom. Uh, what are we? Four miles, just over four miles from Huddersfield. 16:27 we're due in, and it's what nearly 16:24. So three minutes. God, it's going to be close. Mm. 
<clears throat> HO, I wonder why they overcharge their content during the pandemic. Well, I mean, even before the pandemic ever arrived in the United Kingdom, I mean, uh, their prices were over the top from the start, so it's not like it's something new. We, we you know, we, we got used to it for what? When the train sim will come out? 2017 on PC, 2018 on the console, so we had, you know, <laughs> nearly two years of coping with it, I suppose. Uh, or, or getting used to the idea or the fact that Dovetail overcharged their routes, but uh, I wish they lowered the price, particularly during the, low, you know, the lockdown. You know, lower it a bit, you know, make be a bit realistic, you know what I mean? You know, hey, they'll still be getting money in. They'll probably be getting more money in if they lowered the cost, because that would be more friend financially friendly to people, if you like. So, hmm, we'll see. If we have a, lo uh, a lockdown again, uh, national uh, national lockdown, then uh, particularly on the new DLCs, you know, I think their prices will plummet because people you know as much as people would love to get the new hands on the new stuff sometimes they'll just they'll just have to take the hard decision and say sorry dovetail can't do it and I think if dovetail see a, uh, a plummet in their you know income all of a sudden if we were to have a local lockdown again or a national lockdown again I should say um, uh, you know, particularly on the new DLC that is expected to arrive soon, um, then uh, they might have to react and change their prices. And they, you never know, they might even have to ask the, you know, Sony and Microsoft to say, hey, we, we really need you to uh, put some cheap, cheap deals on our stuff. Not just on Train Sim World 2 and the future content, but the uh, Train Sim World 2020 stuff from the past. Anyway, uh, Atro, I think they do deserve, they do, uh, well, they do a decent job making routes and trains, even if it's perfect, and they do deserve some credit. Yeah, I agree. They, you know, ain't easy making this stuff. I mean, I couldn't make it, crikey. <laughs> a lot of talent they have. Uh, you know, I'm grateful to them that we've even got this opportunity to play on, you know, PlayStation and and uh, Xbox. So very grateful. Uh, um, the one thing that does kind of annoy me uh, that the console situation is uh, that these games will not. I don't think they will not be supported uh, for either the I think the, the PlayStation 5 definitely I don't think will be uh, supported train sim well too because uh, well it's, it's, this game's been released before the PlayStation 5 and apparently the PlayStation 5 team are, are what pan selecting the 100 best ranked games or something oh my god we need to break like hell holy man Uh, which is annoying, so there's a chance that if I get a PS5, I won't be able to play Train Sim World 2 stuff. Uh, and another thing too, actually, is that... Um, is that, uh, you know, how we're going to play the Preserve Collection stuff if it was to be on the PS5, because Train Sim World 2020 is on the, you know, it came out when, you know, we had the base PS4 and stuff. So, hmm, that's why I'm a bit reluctant to buying a PlayStation 5. I mean, yes, it'll be great, the graphics and the tech under the hood will be mind-blowing, and, you know, the... Uh, I'm sure the new new games, when they come out, will be fantastic to play, but, you know, if I can't play Train Sim World, you know, 2 or 2020 stuff, then what's the point of grading? You know, 
Uh, I think Xbox is a bit, a bit more forgiving in that aspect. Uh, I believe when they first launched or released details of the Series X, they said, uh, "What well, you get access to a bucket load of stuff, be it you know from the Xbox 360 games or the." you know, the current Xbox One games, old Xbox One games, do the new new stuff we're getting in the future, so that I do like the sound of, but the problem is I, I then can't stream <laughs> on uh, Xbox to YouTube, which is annoying, but it's the way it is, isn't it? Anyway, we've finally arrived at Huddersfield. Oh, off those brakes, these brakes wanna the brakes are doing very well today. No, come on. <laughs> didn't even let me stop. The marker didn't set off anyway. Good. He is not satisfied with where we stopped. Neither was I, to be honest. But here we are, Huddersfield. I must say, the, the lighting in Manchester and Huddersfield and, uh, and Leeds, it, even though it's in the old you know, visuals, but compared to the new, 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 new stuff, it does look pretty good, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? You know, let's be honest. It's not bad. <laughs> but then again, my stream quality is probably horrendous, so... <laughs> oh, where is that red? There's the red, I can see it. That's a fair way out, isn't it? Cool, blimey. There's a fair way out. Right now I want it. Now I can stop. No, I think that'll do. That's that's close enough, isn't it? Yes. All right, we made it to Huddersfield. And what's going on? Absolutely nothing. We got the class 08 over there with some wagons and some coaches it picked up earlier in the day. We got a, there's a class 45 or 47 that's hiding around there, being a mannequin. <sighs> Alright, let's have a look at the chat. Uh, Joshua, you know, if Dovetail weren't around, he might not have had a train sim for consoles. No, he might have had a, well, he might not even have had a train simulator full stop. They're the ones that started it all, wasn't it? Must have, I think. I think it was Microsoft Train Simulator or something, I'm not sure. But uh, to, in terms of their level of, you know, detail and commitment, he wouldn't have had a train simulator like it. So, I mean, I'm very tempted, uh, maybe Christmas time, to upgrade my MacBook and get a... Uh, what is it? A... Mm, newer MacBook Pro, not brand new, but something. But I'm tempted to when I upgrade to that, I might get Train Simulator 2020 and just see what it, what the what it's like. Because there is a stack load of content on there, not just some dovetail, but from other games, models and stuff. So it is interesting. Yeah, I might do. Not sure. Not sure. See what the future holds. Right, the next stop is Dewsbury. 6.8 miles time. Uh, what time are we due in? 16.38. Not too bad. Ironic for PS5. 
for the Xbox Series X, all Xbox One games, 360 games, and some of the games that came out on the original will be playable. Yeah. Sony is making a poor decision only selecting 100 games to be playable on the PS5 from the PS4. I agree. Uh, what it, what those games are, I, I don't know. No. I mean, what is it? The 100 best games that's ranked or something? You know, but most played or something? I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, very interesting. Uh, I'll be interested to see what games they are. Probably won't be any I own at all. Apart from Fortnite or maybe Grand Turismo Sport. Maybe Battlefront had a push, Star Wars, I'm not too sure. But the only way, the only way, the only time I'll upgrade to the PS5 is when Grand Turismo 7 comes out. That I will, but I don't think it'll be coming out for a year or two yet, so that's nice. <laughs> upgrade my Xbox One S to the Xbox Series X, uh, X. Might do that. I've got an external hard drive so I can just bring all my old game data and just stick it on there then stick it on the Series X if it's compatible of course. It really depends on what the price is. I have no idea how much it's going to cost. If it's too, too expensive, then... Yeah. I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. I might wait until they bring out an upgraded Xbox Series X, like they always do. Or like the Prius 4 Pro, or the Xbox One X, or whatever it's called, to get uh, these days. Procedures, even though we're going to be miles over, over 50 miles an hour, we might make it. The brakes are behaving really well today, I must admit. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant. I think the speed of it does continue to decrease, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, it's not. That's why we're going around. I think what was the well, we're now on to what, the main, main line? <laughs> East Coast line or West? I don't have a clue. I don't know what line was back then in the 1980s. How should I know? I haven't let the brakes go off. We got a 1.4% downhill gradient, so we should comfortably get up to speed reasonably quickly to the speed limit of 50 miles per hour. Not long before we have a speed limit of 80. I think that's very brief. I think the main thing I'm looking forward to is getting the old locos and giving them a good thrash on some of the newer routes. Like, you know, imagine doing a freight run on, you know, class 2, class 40s and on Sandpatch grade. That would be awesome. Awesome. I cannot wait for that kind of scenario to happen. Or maybe do a passenger service with the old stuff on, I don't know, maybe the German route or... Peninsula Corridor or something, <laughs> or Great Western Express, whenever that comes, so, yeah, oh, a Class 20 as well, I mean, there's a Class 20 in there as well, so I look forward to conducting services with that as well, but I haven't missed the Class 20, I mean, I think the Class 20 is one of the best local add-ons, like, from a locomotive standpoint, you know, not much bugs, and the sounds are fantastic, it's really good. Yeah. Like, if it was my favourite lo local add-ons across the board, like, you know, Germany, the UK, and North America, um, favourite local add-on, that's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, for England, it would be obviously the heavy freight pack, no surprise. 
uh, for the United States, it would be uh, the diesel shunter, <laughs> MP15 DC, and I'll give Amtrak shunter a shout out as well. Uh, for Germany, mm. Maybe the 182, maybe. I do like the 422 and the 425, I must admit, I do like them. But, we'll see. Come on, I haven't used a horn in a long time. Soon in the game, my god, it's getting so dark. But you can see in the horizon the last visuals of daylight. So we'll be getting brighter skies maybe the closer we progress to Leeds. Whoa, we need to break, didn't see that. 76 mile per hour. Uh, 40. Five mile per hour speed limit, I should say. We should be okay. Well, maybe, not sure. Actually, we'll be miles over the speed limit, but I'm not too bothered. Class 40 service. Ah, break, 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 break. I think in the game there's a secret service that somehow just goes by here. I've no idea what it is, and I don't know where it stops. I mean, it's not like a freight service, it's a passenger service. The scuttles off down there, or comes out, or emerges from down there. Uh, and I have no idea what service that is. I'll have to rail fan there, uh, maybe tonight, and uh, it'll be a long time. <laughs> but uh, I'll have to go back and maybe some of my streams or scenario... I think it is in, the, yes, it is in service mode. I'll have to go back into some of my old streams and have a look, see if I can pinpoint what time of day I managed to uncover it. Because I, I don't know where... It, yeah, it is an entry, you can't take control of it. I don't think. So... Yeah. I'll, I'll have to give that a little investigation. <coughs> uh, anyway. Let's, uh, oh, maybe not. We've got a uh, Dewsbury coming up shortly. Um, we're way, we're late, way late. Jesus Christ, we're four minutes late. Oh dear. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dewsbury. Um, uh, sure I'm gonna get the Xbox Series X for Christmas. Fair enough. Megan Payne, Pange, Pange, I don't know. One, two, three. Hey, how are you? Hope you're well. Nitro, how much do you think the uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox X will cost? I'm surprised they haven't announced the prices. I'm not sure. Maybe they don't know themselves. <laughs> Maybe they were originally going to go for a high price like before, but of course the pandemic um, you know, meant that people will only fork out the money if they have it and if it's absolutely necessary. I'm pretty sure some people can wait until uh, there's a bit of a discount. I don't know. Three to four hundred. I don't know, who knows, maybe even more than that, maybe five hundred pounds. I mean, you never know. Oh, well, we're very, very late, but at least we made it to Dewsbury. We are almost there. Nearly made it. I think the next one is Leeds, I think. So that's nice. Can you turn your ding game volume down, please? Sure. I'll check, but I think I did turn it down. <laughs> I think I actually did turn it down. Because I haven't been on it for so long. Yeah, it's already down. 70%. Was that too loud for some of you? 
please say if it is too loud then I will turn it down a bit more maybe 50% I'll wait for you to all decide um, Joshua secret service did you say yeah I think so I, I don't think it's a service you could do you can like control but uh, I think it's a secret AI service that scuttles around oh, I forgot what station it is bloody hell um, oh, hang on I've got to get my map now on Transpennine you can tell that I haven't been on it for a hundred years um, let me find it uh, where was it I forget I'm so forgetful today I do apologize it was by uh, where was it by that's Huddersfield um, is it number 12 or 13 I think I'm not too sure what station 12 13 Ravensthorpe or Murfield? I'm not too sure. What's before... Right, Dewsbury. Maybe Ra it's either Ravensfort, Murfield or Dighton or however you say it. It's one of those stations. I'm sure you know which one it is. I don't. I can't remember. Oh yes, I'll check, uh, see what... Did you say something about the volume? <laughs> uh, I did find a little loud... Uh, but didn't say because I didn't want to annoy anyone. Oh, well, I'll turn it down a bit and then. I mean, the older stuff does get very loud. Oh, 50%. That should be alright, shouldn't it? Yeah. We'll see. We'll find out. My god, I've got the ready throttle off. Don't want to blow up the engine. Well, I'll just wait until the. Procedures on the passengers are finished. Not like anyone's getting on and off, but there we go. The final stop, the last charge begins to Leeds, 1640, uh, 1654, we're due in. All right, let's go one last time. full thrash of the 45 here's a question for you all um, what's your favorite old locomotive you know what's your favorite old locomotive on train sim world not just the new stuff but the old stuff um, do you like the 33 is that your favorite the 52 is that your favorite the 47 um, the class 08, the class 09, the 40, the 45, uh, the 31, the 37, the 20, <laughs> the 101. <laughs> There's a lot to choose from, so yeah, what's what's your favourite old locomotive from this game? And here's another challenging question for you all. What's your f which route do you prefer? Tees Valley or Trans Pennine? So, there you go, that's a nice little challenge for you all. A bit of audience participation, as they say. <laughs> oh, why the hell? It's a bit chilly today. It's chilly in the house. Clear, oh, yeah, it's a nice day today. It's quite warm when you're in the sun, when you're in the shade, it's not. Chat now, giving me a chance. 
Um, I say Megan, what did I say Megan? Mange Pange, that's it. Megan, Jesus Christ, what did I say that? Uh, oh god, it's got me the class 40. Nitro is the 1972 tube stock because it is old. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how old these locos are, like when they were built and stuff. I'll take a look at that. That'd be interesting. Um, Joshua, the class 40. Joshua, why the heck do you have Mickey Mouse? Or what? Uh, well, it's, a, uh, it's one of the optional watch faces you can have on the Apple Watch. Uh, there's so many different watch faces, it's, it's crazy. Uh, but I like the Mickey Mouse one, it's kind of <laughs> unique and... It's just the classic Mickey Mouse, it's not like the new Mickey Mouse, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll have a look at the watch faces actually. Face gallery, yeah, there's all sorts. You get new stuff like... Uh, uh, pride stuff at the moment, you've got activity faces, astronomy, so you get the earth, the moon, the solar system, uh, Calif California style clocks, uh, chronograph, clock, uh, just random colors of clocks, uh, explorer clocks, fire and water clock faces, uh, gradient ones, uh, infograph ones like your heartbeat activities and the earth time and so on and so forth um, infograph kaleidoscope scope kaleidoscope ones liquid metal uh, meridian ones which I do like you got Mickey and Minnie Mouse the old style modular ones modular compact ones motion ones like you touch it and it does stuff uh, you get a jellyfish, a flower and a butterfly um, you can have your photos on there um, simple ones <laughs> Siri, you get solar ones which is quite cool, I like that one uh, time lapse ones which I really do like so that's um, some of the cities uh, you get Shanghai, Paris, London, Hong Kong, New York and uh, Mac Lake wherever the hell that is, I have no idea where Mac Lake is but uh, yeah, it's interesting watch this you also get Toy Story, <laughs> so you get all the Toy Story characters with custom animations, that's quite cool. Uh, vapor ones, so it'd be good for people to smoke uh, vapor. Uh, and X Large, so a lot of face galleries So uh, for the Apple Watch. Uh, can't wait for when Halloween and Christmas ones come out, that'd be quite cool. <laughs> right. <coughs> Oh, I remember seeing it. Ah, yeah. Yeah, and people know where... But I'll have to do an investigation, like... Because you can't board it, can you, if you're a passenger, unless it's going all the way to Manchester, or unless it's just a little bit of track it's going all along, and, you, and that's it. Like, it's a very brief appearance, and that's it. It's gone for, like, what, 20 seconds? Appearance? 20 second appearance? I think I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, DSW to Scotland. Uh, we need to start getting off the brakes. That would be nice. Uh, if we all like the same, it would be a very boring world. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Joshua, what's your favourite German loco? Quite like the 143. Yeah. One four three is pretty good. It's quite easy to drive, isn't it? Um, one five five is a good challenge. Must uh, with the little throttle control wheel. Uh, for two oh four, if it wasn't for its gameplay debacles, uh, that would, that is a good locomotive to drive. Um, for one eight two, I, I do like. Uh, I think my favourite has got to be either the 42, yeah, the DBBR 422, you know, like we had on Rhinewood Austin and uh, Armstrecker Rhinewood. I do like the Ice 3M, that is a brilliant, brilliant loco, brilliant high speed train. And it'd be hard for them to match or be or get better than that, really. 
across the board it's really good you know the the physics the sounds the animations the controls you know top notch so yeah from probably the preserved collection stuff would be the 422 um, I think the new German one will be the ice 3M so mix between those two uh, Joshua will quite like the one four three. Atra, what do you who do you think will win the F one race in Magello? Also, what is the official name of the race in Magello? I think it's called the Tuscany Grand Prix because it's in Tuscany in Italy, so it'd be known as the Tuscan Grand Prix or something. I'm I'm not too sure. I think it's in Tuscany. Uh yeah, I'll have a look at the calendar. F one calendar will say the official names. Um I'm not sure. Do we go to Magello next? Is it next in the calendar? I've no idea. I mean, that, uh, who knows what will happen? You never know. Ferrari might spring a surprise. You know, it's their home track. They know it more than anyone. So you never know. He might. Well, he, he can't do much worse than what he did at Monza. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible race for them. Uh, so at least points surely would be on the agenda for them. Uh, let me have a look. Yeah, the Tuscan, the Tuscany Grand Prix in the Mugello circuit, that's what it's called. We've got the Russian Grand Prix at Sochi. The Eiffel Grand Prix in the Nürburgring, not called the German Grand Prix. The Portuguese Grand Prix at Portimao, that'll be fantastic, that. The Emilia... The Emilia... Romgana Grand Prix, basically the San Marino Grand Prix at Imola. Um, and then you've got the Turkish Grand Prix, the Bahrain Grand Prix, the Sakia Grand Prix, and the, the new U section of Bahrain, and then you got the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So yeah, I just wish they added those tracks into F1 2020, that would be fantastic. But they said they won't, co so that's a disappointment. Um, nah, a bit disappointing, must admit. But hey, they got their priorities set on the next year's game. Right, we need to start breaking. My god, we really do need to start breaking. Now would be a good time to break, my dear. Right, let's get down 60%. Need to get down to that speed limit just in case we have a red signal coming up. Because we are late, so. I might block, you know, clog everything up at Leeds. I mean, you could treat this service like a end of workday scenario for everyone, you know, going back to school or work, college, university, whatever. So, yeah, the school train home. <laughs> right. Uh, I think also in the UK today, uh, some train companies allowed more services to commence so a lot more trains are out and about on the rails across the board doing passenger services so that's uh, interesting uh, but I do stress I mean I have been on one of them uh, during uh, you know uh, the easing of the restrictions they, they do take things very very seriously on board I mean um, you know, you have to either have, you know, a special pass or, you know, I think if you have medical conditions or learning disabilities, if you can't wear a mask, uh, if you do have a mask or, you know, shield, you have to wear it at all times, uh, not just on the train but on the platforms as well when you get into the station, um, you know, and the station, which was, uh, what was it, Reading Station, yeah, um, uh, they only allow one-way systems, uh, they close things like the cafes were not open, uh, the lounges were closed, um, you know, I don't think they could handle cash, I don't think, they did, I think it was card only across the board, so uh, if you're a bit hesitant to travel on the train, then please uh, do not stress about it, I've been on it and I can confirm they are taking every precaution to ensure your safety, but this is in the United Kingdom, I don't know what it's like across the world, but yeah, they they do take things seriously, you know, and they ain't playing around, I mean, I, I, there was a passenger thing in the carriage I was in, and they took their mask off for like a minute, 
and bang, the staff member was there and said, look, you got to put it on, <laughs> you know, otherwise you're off. So it ain't fooling around. And I think the only way you can travel on the train is if you are in a group of with people, like family or something, you have to sit. You can't like have four people on the table. You have to have two people on the table sitting at the window. To Oops. small people use it, but uh, rest assured, in the UK, in the United Kingdom at least, uh, the train companies are doing all their best to uh, keep people safe. Obviously in the stations is a tad more difficult, but hey, what can you do? You know, people have got to get to where they got to go. Trains still have to run on time, if they can run on time. Um, so there we go. But here we are. We are in Leeds. We've made it. We have made it to Leeds in one piece. Very late, I must admit. Nearly five minutes late, but... Um, but we made it. So that's good. Right, let's take a look at the tiddly chat. Uh, Mass Price, do you think I should buy TSW2 when I have Train Simul 2020? Mm. Uh, for 2499, it, it is a good, it's a good deal. Um, I must admit. You know, you get free routes, and if you've got some of the old preserved collection stuff, then of course you can uh, uh, use them as well, download them for free and have a go. But uh, I think it's a worthy upgrade, definitely. There are some areas which are not good, and some areas that need fixing, but uh, you know, uh, I see a bright future for it, if Dovetail keep to their words. Um, but there we go, we made it. Let like the passengers do their thing, do its thing. Lock the doors. That took one hour and ten minutes, not too bad. We stopped at Staley Bridge, Huddersfield, Dewsbury, and then finally terminating at Leeds City. We got a silver medal. I'll take that. We were a bit late, I must admit. Better than a bronze any day. Come on. Here we go. Wait for service start at five o'clock. Oh god, we've got two minutes then. I'll have one more look at the chat and then I'm gonna call it a day. Right, um Amtrak, good morning, how are you? Uh Russia, oh yes, did you see the new tri -mo train? No. What, in real life? I presume that's what you mean. Um, uh, no. Uh, I mean, they were very... You know... The staff were very quick, like, Oh, you've got a ticket for this train? Alright, we'll get you there straight away. You know, they ain't fooling around. They don't want you to hang around and... Wait. They want you to be... There on time, on the dot. You know, if you have to wait in station for a couple of minutes, then... You know, social distance, all that stuff. Uh, if you have, you know, if you have to wear a mask or shield, wear it at all times. Like the moment you step in the station to the moment you get off the train and out of the next station or wherever you're going to, you, you got to have it on. Um, I did, uh, or a little shield thing in the bob. Uh, not a mask, I couldn't bear it, but a shield I could cope with. Right, exit. There we go. That took one minute thirty four seconds. Right, I'll be going chugging off and that will be the end. Uh I'll have a look at the chat once more while you see it depart. Uh HR could car masters add the Bahrain Oval to twenty twenty because I remember crashing in turn four the actual layout of the oval. They could do it. They could. They could, I'm not sure, but they could. They could. They could, we're not sure. Might do it, I'm not sure. I'll have to see. Train Sim World, what a lovely old station. It is, isn't it? Great lighting. Really nice. 
Five o'clock. You don't hear that very often. That's a nice little feature, isn't it? If that is since the beginning, when it's five o'clock in the game, or whatever o'clock, uh, the bells go on the on the churches, which is quite nice. Um, Hey, I was upside down. I went into camera mode. It glitched me out under the circuit. That's how I managed to find the oval section. <laughs> uh, Joshua, it's a new train. It can run on third rail power, overhead, and diesel. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know what you mean. If it was a class 800, that's what I went on. But uh, I don't know what one, a class 802 or something. I couldn't look at it for very long. It had to be pretty swift. Uh, Tradesable too well, thank you for a great stream as usual. Spurs, Reading, uh, Joshua, no, okay, fair enough, I don't know what it was then. But I'll dwell on that another day or week or month, whatever, whenever next time I use the train. Anyway, that will conclude the stream, going back in time on the old girl Trans Pennine, uh, doing a passenger service for once as well. Um, usually do freight stuff on Trans Pennine, don't I? <laughs> Not today. I decided to do a passenger service going from Manchester Victoria to Leeds with a 45. A bit dark in the game as you can see now. A bit darker than I expected. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you could see most of it. Hope you could hear me very well for the majority of the stream. I do apologise if you couldn't hear me for the entirety of it, but at least you could hear me during the end. Uh, so yeah, for next stream uh, will not be this weekend actually. Uh, I will be away this weekend for my uh, mum's birthday, so the next stream will be, um, I would say, uh, let's have a look, the, either the 18th, 19th, 20th of September, so basically um, two weeks time, roughly, I'd say, or, or next, next Friday, yeah, next Friday, or something like that. So uh, yeah, make sure to join me there. If you'd enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, the usual jazz. Uh, I will be putting content out though uh, for this week regarding Peninsula Corridor, the scenarios and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, hope you're enjoying the content I am creating. So yes, I would just like to say thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your week. And I will see you next time. Thank you very much.